So, you're recording? Recording. We are recording. Allie's got, um, you can see Allie's right there. Yeah. So she's in the room with us. And see if it's just like you're in the room right with us here. And we can actually get work done on my, my computer. On our That's computer, neat. actually, because we're sharing. Yeah. Yeah, so this is absolutely amazing. So what I want to tell everybody about is, so what Steve and I are doing is that we're working um, together. He's in Los Angeles. I'm on the beach in Maui. And I've got my awesome remote office here. I've got a great microphone set up here. What we're doing is we have, we're using Google Hangouts right here and we're using Screen Hero for the video. We both have our Google Hangouts muted and Steve's also using an iPad. It's really important not to try running Google Hangouts and Screen Hero on your screen at the same time. The reason why is it'll really start sucking up your CPU. So that's bad. And we have not noticed any sort of degradation in performance, bandwidth-wise, from having both a simultaneous video chat with the screen hero. So the difference in collaboration has been amazing because when I'm working with Steve, we can make like eye contact for a second, and then we'll start working on the screen. And check this out. So right now, Steve, if you can see his screen, I'm highlighting it. He's seeing everything that I'm doing there. Now, Steve, yeah, now take a look I'll here. Yeah, Alec, can you zoom in a little bit here on the screen? Just walk over a little bit and zoom in a little bit. So right here, yeah, move your cursor around, Steve. So right here, we see that we've got Steve's cursor. So Steve, highlight some text right okay, there. I actually just highlighted this block of text with 39 Yeah, so you just highlight, highlight some more text right now. Or just click again and highlight again. Yeah, so right now he's doing some things. He's highlighting some text. Hit Command-X, delete it, for example. Okay, boom. He's editing there. So he's really working on my screen. Then I could start doing some stuff here. Ah, wait a second. Sorry. There we go. So I've got Vim key bindings on here, and I didn't actually tell Steve about that. That's one of the key things when you're pair programming with people, is so they know what key bindings you're, you're using. So one thing I can do here with RubyMine is there's a keystroke command here, control back tick, that I can switch my key map. And I'm going to switch my key map here to default. And I'm going to go over here to the tools menu and I'm going to turn off the Vim emulator. Because Steve, that would be really confusing because Steve is not a Vim user. So that was really, really confusing. So now we can just, you know, now it's just a regular Mac sort of interface. So Steve, why don't you just type a line there, hit return on your side, click on there and hit return. Yeah, boom. Yeah, and just put comment, hi Justin. This is cool, whatever. Yeah, and also I can see a little thing there. I can see that Steve's the one, he's the one that's actually doing the work right there. So some other tools that we use is, some other tools that we use is Slack right here. So Steve and I really enjoy Slack. It's just a, I'm using that with a lot of different people. It's really catching on. So that's a great collaboration tool. We definitely want, you definitely want an online chat sort of tool like HipChat, Campfire. The latest one is Slack and that's really popular. So besides that, so the other thing, another tip is, is that, um, Steve, could you share your screen for one second? Sure. Yeah, just. Um, okay, let me jump over here. Yeah, just put something like a browser window on your screen. Yeah. Actually, you know what, Steve, why don't you yeah, open. And we, we have to end our share first, and then I can. No, nope. nope. all you do is just say share on, um, so all Steve's going to be doing is he's going to be going over here on Slack, and he's going to be there. You can. Um, no, no, Steve, you don't go on my machine. You're on my machine. I know, I know. <laughs> and then all he has to do is click, um, click on the screen icon. And when uh, he clicks on the screen icon, it's going to go over to his screen. Steve, why don't you show him um, TalkSurf.com, our latest project. Okay, great. And let's, let's talk a little bit about what we're going to do with TalkSurf.com. Both Steve and I are very avid water sports people. All right, TalkSurf.com. All right. Yeah, so this is, this is real. So now it's a little different. We're going to see, so I've got a couple options here in terms of how I'm looking at the screen. I've got 100% and I've got fit. Right now it's in fit mode, so it doesn't take up my full screen. And that's awesome because then I could go and I could go and click on other screens. Yeah, I could go click over here and I could do some other stuff while we're collaborating. So, and also if Steve has multiple screens, that's true, true as well. Another nice feature is I could go zoom 100%. Now I've got a little thing right here which lets me adjust where, where we are. 
I can actually see you doing that as well. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And now I'm going to have a little thing. If I drag up to the top, now the window's full size. So now, Steve, like if you stop moving anything on your screen, if you look yep. here, the resolution is absolutely 100% perfect. So I'm going to actually um, control Steve's screen here. I'm going to click on this um, topic here. Um, this little article I wrote, why we're starting TalkSurf.com. And what TalkSurf.com is, it's a forum for people to talk about surfing related activities. Surfing, windsurfing, kiteboarding, and stand-up paddling. All of which pretty much Steve does, except I don't think he's windsurfed before, and all of which I do. And why it's super awesome that we've got, you know, why, why we're actually setting up a forum. It's something that's totally different than what you get on, say, Facebook, where it's all about me. This is what I'm telling you. Or um, your blog. This is my blog. This is, you know, all about me, what I'm telling you. The whole point of a forum is to actually discuss topics with a really cool community of people and it's got great editing tools. So it's really collaborative creation of content that is interesting to read. It's also great reference material. It's searchable. That's something that Facebook doesn't really give you is the ability to search on topics. So that's, you know, that's TalkSurf.com. Like over here, I could put, say, kiteboarding. And so here it comes up. We get a bunch of nice little topics here on kiteboarding. So I think Steve put a little mention of Steve. Did you do wave yeah, kiting? And, yeah. So wave kiting in Ecuador right there. And I could even edit his response here. I could change something here if I didn't think kite surfing was the right category, etc. Anyway, that's TalkSurf.com, which I hope you check out because that's going to be the new place where we want to discuss anything related to surfing. And, and, that, and, that, and, and not to mention, you might want to, I don't know if the video can hear me from, from Yeah, through, perfectly. Through, this is built on top of a pretty cool open source forum software called Discourse. Oh yeah, so Discourse, so I go over here, I'm controlling Steve's machine now, so Discourse.org, it's absolutely amazing. Click over here on Meta, and I'm going to click over here, I'm going to type in Talk Surf, and check it out. And right there it comes up with our some questions and posts I've put on Discourse for TalkSurf.com. What's absolutely phenomenal is Coding Horror, who is Jeff Atwood, the guy that started Stack Overflow. I swear, both me and my um, partners on TalkSurf, we put questions on this forum about how TalkSurf, excuse me, how Discourse works for what we want to set up. And it's been absolutely phenomenal. I mean, I think Jeff is just right on there. And within a minute, we've got a response to our question. And that is something that didn't happen if you ever tried calling up, say, Microsoft in the past. Wouldn't you say so, Steve? Uh, yes, you're definitely going to be with a Death uh, Star and the bureaucracy. <laughs> right, yeah, and trust me, it's um, you wouldn't get that with IBM support or Oracle support and Jeff Atwood. It's just, I mean, basically, it's just super, super amazing. It's phenomenal. It's an incredible place for creating content. And it's all about this new world where everything is all distributed. It's all asynchronous when it needs to be. It's synchronous when it needs to be. Um, okay, so a couple other things I want to show you is that we've got here a Pomodoro timer. So when Steve are, say, pairing together, one thing that's kind of nice is to just remember when we're pairing because it's really intense. you got to take breaks every once in a while because it's just so intense we're just trying to do stuff. So having a timer... I think this, I think this is the, why we're, the reason why we're surfers and kite surfers and wind surfers because you got to take a break from the intensity of the pair program. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so we've got, we've got a little timer there. Let's see, what, a couple other things I want to mention, technically speaking, is one of them is I'm using the speaker out of my display here, but I'm not using the camera out of it. That works great because I've got speakers around my office that are set up for the rest of what I'm doing, but if you have speakers that are behind you, then they'll go into the microphone. So it's really important to have the speaker that you're listening to behind your microphone. The other thing I've got here is I've got a blue microphone, and I've got a pop filter. Recently, this pop filter here was $30 on Amazon. Totally worth it. Gives you a lot better sound. The other thing is that the, um, the stand right here, this is really nice to have a stand. It's a heel stand, and it clips right here onto the desk. That really helps out with the sound quality as well. Let's see. Have I, um, Steve, I forgot anything. There's one, there's one actual, one other thing which you do is that sometimes I work with people in California and we do something called Scrum. And you have a Scrum stand-up meeting every day. So what I do 
is I put my iPad right here on top of my screen, and then Steve can see, hey Steve, we're having our stand-up scrum meeting. Have you ever done those? I'm going to put my, my, yep, I'm going to put my iPad on top of my screen and stand up as well. Steve, we could be doing full-on scrum XP programming. How do you like that? Sounds good. I might even go into my backyard with my iPad and do a little more scrum. <laughs> So that's so that's how we, you know we could have our daily stand-up meeting too, even though we're not technically right there in the office. What's really nice about these iPad Minis is that this is a stand from Apple, and it fits really nicely. You don't want to drop it, but it fits really nicely on top of a Thunderbolt display. Then, when we're done with our meeting, we put it back down, and look at that. I have got. The iPad Mini somehow fits right underneath my monitor here, my Thunderbolt monitor. Right under here, it's nice, at least for me, because I'm a little bit taller, is I've got the monitor raised up a little bit, and this desk is really, really high. I've got here Sedgwick's Introduction to Algorithms, which is, by the way, a great book. Here I've got an Advantage Kinesis keyboard. When Steve met me, I didn't know this, he was actually one of the people that actually used these too. So we had a... Um, sitting right below me, right here, my Advantage Kinesis keyboard. Yeah. So that's great. So Steve is Steve and I are like right in the office together. I've got a key tray. Um, I like using a mouse rather than a track trackball. I think that's pretty much it. Anything else, um, Steve, Allie, anything else I can mention about sharing and pair programming that I didn't mention? You know, the only thing I would say just to add on to what you were talking about the Kinesis keyboard is that, you know, and this this you know goes beyond pairs programming, but you know, when you're sitting in front of a desk and, and you know, you tend to hold your tension a bit in your body when you're concentrating so much. So yeah. giving yourself the ability to change your position and to have really healthy ergonomics is important, especially if you want to, you know, do this kind of stuff for a long time. I'm actually a designer by profession and, uh, you know, more of an over-the-shoulder programmer with Justin, but it's the same activity. When you're focused on something, you're trying to iterate it and get the, you know, kind of optimize the design of what you're doing, whether it's code or design, you tend to, you know, you tend to forget that you're sitting there for four hours pounding something out. So I think it's really important to have, you know, invest in your ergonomics. It's not that expensive. It's like having a good bed. If you're sleeping in a bed at eight hours a night, you know, it's an investment in 30%, 33% of your day, every day for your entire life. And if you're working for 8, 10, 12, 14 hours, it's even greater investment. You could argue that you have healthy ergonomics in your in your work environment, especially in a home office where you know you can find yourself just really focused for long periods of time. Sure, it's it's easy to spend 12 hour days in your home office when you have no commute. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. especially when we're just just because of the nature of not that that yeah. commute. Like, yeah. Yeah. One of the things when I moved out to well, before I moved out to Maui. Well, I was the absolute advocate of extreme programming, specifically test-driven development and pair programming, where I was working at a company called Trigo, which then became part of IBM. And then when I was spilling my time up between Maui and San Francisco, that was the thing I missed, was being out here and not being able to do such close pair programming type interaction with my fellow developers. Um, I really, really enjoyed that, but still, for personal reasons, I wanted to be out here in Maui. Some of you probably can understand that. In any case, what's happened is, is that broadband has become incredibly fast now. It's just it's phenomenal. We've got here a 50 megabit connection, and I'm seeing that if I go on a speed test. And so right now, here I'm working with Steve, and he could just, you know, he could like, you know, he could see exactly what I'm doing on his screen. He actually just yeah. looked up at the screen and saw what I highlighted. So now that we've actually got this worked out where we're using both the combination of the iPad and with the Google Hangout and with Screen Hero, it's just working absolutely phenomenal. So the tools that we have nowadays just make the collaboration so darn good. What my prediction is is that places that are outside of you know LA and San Francisco, where you know, places where people want to live for say outdoor activities and where they could do their work virtually. Those places are going to see a lot more people doing what I'm doing. So I keep telling. Yeah, I, think the, I think the opportunity is that you know those of us who see this trend early on, you skill yourself up, get the right software tools, build the right relationships, and you can be kind of on the leading edge of that. It, it, I mean, you know, every year that goes by, I remember when I first started working, you know, with other co startup companies as a consultant, um, of more about 14 years ago. People would ask me when they were going to hire me, hey, where are, where are you, by the way? 
oh, you're in San Francisco, or oh, you're you know wherever you are, and uh, and they said, well, do you think that's going to be a problem that we're that we're not in the same city? And in certain circumstances, uh, I would say, well, really, this is a decision for you to make, but I'm happy to come to you and work together, and I still do that. But what I found progressively over the past 14 years is that people, they still, they kind of, are, there's an awareness of where you are, but it's not a negative when they're considering working with you. It's more just something, it's just a logistical understanding. Oh, you're in Maui. Oh, you're in Los Angeles. Oh, you're in San Francisco. Great. Well, can we get together next week and do some work together in person? Sure, absolutely. Get on a plane. But it's not a preventative, it's not a conversation that you dread having anymore. In the beginning, I was like, oh, what am I going to say, you know, 14 years ago? But the world has changed, and it's only changing more in that direction of virtuality. So the better the tools get, the more it supports, um, you know, this sense of, I, I wouldn't call this, you know, telepresence per se, but it's definitely pretty good. Yeah, it's it's absolutely ph phenomenal. I can't, I think the difference is very, very small. And for me, for, you know, the key difference is, is that, you know, it's, you can't bring going surfing, going kiteboarding, you can't do that virtually and it's just not the same, it's just not the same deal. <laughs> But we can work together, we can collaborate all day long, and then we can go and we can take a break and we can be where we want to be. And that really is technology doing something amazing in the world. And it's really enabling something that just really wasn't feasible just a few years ago. Yeah, and there, and there is a lot of science that's supporting you know, those intense periods of work. There's a kind of an optimal performance that you have, and then taking a break actually optimizes your performance again when you come back to the work. If you just grind it out for 14 hours straight without taking that 45 minute break for lunch or jumping in the pool or whatever it is, you know, for you, go go to play with your kids, you know, um, stretch, do do a few minutes of yoga, take a nap, um, you know, your performance actually degrades over the course of the day. So this is actually a way to get more. Uh, you know, kind of higher, more effective work out of yourself, potentially in a more efficient way. So you can maybe get 14 hours of work done in 12 hours or 10 hours if you're really, really focused. I mean, how, just how many hours does a programmer actually, in terms of their true programming output, I mean, I've been yeah. told by project managers and other programmers, like, you shouldn't expect more than four to six hours of true output out of yourself a day. That would be a good day as a, as a, for a, a really good programmer. Yeah, I think I think that's probably true on average. I mean, you work I, a lot more than that. But yeah, I think it's true on average. I think it depends on the project. Depends if you're pairing. It depends. It, it really depends on the person too. I mean, there's you know professional athletes and what they do versus what somebody else does is going to vary quite a lot. So that's pretty good, um, Steve. Anything else you want to add? I, I've, I've no. kind of covered all the topics I wanted to cover. So that's the um, welcome to the future. This is it. And I'm, by the way, I'm Justin Gordon. I'm a Rails consultant on Maui. My company is called Rails on Maui. This is Steve DeBrun, DeBrun Design. He's over in LA. And we're available to work with you anywhere in the world. Would you agree? Shut yeah. up. Yeah. And that's our, and then please visit our personal project. Steve and I, we're um, collaborators. He's the design end. I'm the Ruby on Rails end. And our first collaboration together that's actually gone live for everyone is TalkSurf.com. It's a discourse site. We launched it just this past week. So there's not much on there. There is self-enrollment. You can go on there. It's live. TalkSurf.com. And that is another thing that is absolutely the future is Discourse.org. You'll be seeing a lot more of that in the next couple of years. Okay. That's it, Steve. So Aloha. Aloha from Maui and from Los Angeles. Thank you very much for watching our little video.